For the fact that I post videos about film in my spare time, it kind of goes without saying that I'm a bit obsessed with film and film discussion in general. In fact, it was film criticism that put me further down the cinematic rabbit hole, originally watching old Siskel and Ebert reviews that allowed me to develop a passion for film myself. And these reviews are still worth watching now. They're a great example of how rewarding film discussion can be, not only just to run through what you took away from a film, but also analyzing what you think the film might have been trying to say to the audience. And yet, I think I'm falling out of love with film criticism. Now let me caveat that long form discussion, video essays and deep dives into film will always have my attention. I'm talking specifically about written reviews that drop just before a film comes out and tie everything together with a score at the bottom. My understanding has always been that these reviews were designed to help the general public in deciding whether a film was worth seeing or not. Let's face it, not everyone has the time or money to go and watch every film as it drops in the cinema, so it helps to have some Someone in your corner letting you know whether or not a film is worth your time. More recently, however, it seems as though film reviews are overly negative. And this might be in my head, but I'm going to give you three recent examples to illustrate my point. Damien Chazelle's most recent film is like nothing the director has ever made before. It's a send-up of Hollywood's golden era, openly mocking the absurdity that allowed Hollywood to flourish in its early stages, whilst also having a reverence for film and the impact of cinema that can still be felt today. It's quite long and definitely crass, but the whole thing is entertaining from start to finish, and it has some of the funniest laugh out loud scenes I've watched in a long time. The Evening Standard, one star. After big spectacle films like Spectre and 1917, director Sam Mendes opts for a more low-key affair in Empire of Light, which follows a blossoming romance in 1980s Margate that is soon put to the test with themes of mental health and racist attitudes that prevail during that time period. It takes on some hefty subject matter, but the whole thing is held together by two outstanding lead performances. Two stars by The Independent on track to be the highest grossing film of 2023, the Super Mario Bros movie has been decades in the making, but it does gamers proud. Not only by recreating the sense of fun that made the game so enjoyable in the first place, but also by peppering the film with lots of references and Easter eggs that longtime fans of the series will absolutely love. As a cherry on top, the animation is gorgeous and Jack Black is clearly having the best time voicing the villainous Bowser. The Observer one star. Look, I don't want to hate on film critics too much, but speaking from my own experience, if I had listened to these reviews, I would have missed out on some of my favorite films of the year so far. Which begs the question, what role should a review have in our decision to watch a film? And it's precisely here where I'm torn. After all, I'm a critic myself. As a tech journalist, I review products, and I'm lucky because that is a bit more objective than reviewing a film. And for that reason, I'm going to stop reading scored reviews until after I've seen the film that they discuss. That way, I don't end up missing out on films that I might love, and I can come to the discussion knowing full well what the film means to me. Maybe that's something that a lot of you already do, and in which case, I'm sorry for pointing out the obvious. But let me know in the comments if you avoid reading film reviews before you actually watch the films in question. I'd be interested to know what you guys think, and if you don't mind hitting that subscribe button on the way out, that would be amazing. But either way, thanks for watching.